Okay. Um, yeah, thanks everyone for coming. Um, welcome to How to Find Engineering Employment Amid the New Normal. And I, I'm just going to grab this and make sure it's going here. Yeah, I'm Matthew Glynn. I work for the city. I'm doing my EIT and I'm hopping through every business unit there. So um, since uh, two years being out of school, I've had eight jobs in engineering. Um, so I, I like uh, finding new challenges and, and switching things up. And really, this uh, talk is um, focused. So if you employ all the techniques discussed today, you'll go from uh, looking for like a position to have, just having oodles of opportunity that you'll um, then have to decide like which ones you want to go with. And I'm just going to stop sharing my mic because I'm a big, big hand talker here. Uh, and just go back to this. So it's, I guess we're in the midst of a pandemic. Um, the new normal is a different time for everyone. Um, and it's really challenging for recent grads and students to uh, to find positions. Um, and, and that's, it's, yeah, um, we're going to acknowledge that. Uh, and it's it's almost a moving target right now of like of how to get in there. But a lot of the things are are similar. So we'll we'll go into like various details of how to find them. But just know that you're not alone. Um, this is like a recent-ish employment graph, uh, and it just shows how um, this recent pandemic um, is almost as much employment as unemployment rate as uh, both of the previous um, uh, financial crises combined, the one in 99-2000 and 2008-2009. Uh, so, but with the flattening of the curve, infrastructure stimulus packages, and uh, this adaptation um, to the new normal, we're hopefully seeing, well, we are seeing an unemployment rate dropping um, and hopefully just as fast as it rose. So uh, as you can see in the bottom right-hand screen, uh, the screen there should be little numbers. Um, we're gonna do questions at the end. So if, if things pop up, um, yeah, uh, please jot them down as uh, I wanna be able to answer everything that might come up. Um, these are the different sections uh, of the presentation that we'll have, and it's um, mostly geared on the, the first section, but um, uh, as the presentation goes on, there'll be less and less slides for each of the later ones. Um, so I might brush over some topics. So yeah, if you wanna uh, do a deeper dive in one of them in the question answer period, uh, let's go for it. Um, so networking. Um, it's really important to think about how you can uh, network and, and grow that network, uh, because, especially because traditional networking really isn't um, uh, available right now in this new normal. Um, really, I don't know the next time I'm going to shake someone's hand, um, but there's still a lot of ways uh, to connect to people, whether it's picking up the phone, attending a virtual event like this one, um, emailing video calls, uh, and there's lots of just general examples like former, even current colleagues, mentors, current or former classmates, professors, uh, even friends and family. Um, and just like bumping into a new person um, outside, six feet apart, of course. Uh, so some examples of uh, where you can grow your network in uh, digitally from home. Uh, one is virtual networking events. Uh, and they've been happening amid the pandemic, and they're a great way to meet people and stay connected to the engineering community. Silver lining here is that with so many people wanting to stay connected, this creates a great opportunity uh, to create events, not just locally, but across the country and across the world. Um, and we're going to discuss some specific organizations that have been having a, a digital networking events. Um, but what I do is I might look up engineering networking events with those quotation marks in Google. Or, um, then I might do space Halifax or space Nova Scotia or space Canada, like whatever region I'm targeting. Um, and it's it's always changing, like, um, like on a week to week basis, there's always new ones popping up all over. Um, and this has really allowed me to grow my network and connect with people uh, I haven't been exposed to. Um, and really, when there's a hole in the market, like if you're not seeing that, it's a great opportunity to create those. When I was a student, I organized about half a dozen of these, just connecting um, hiring managers uh, and HR managers with students and new graduates. And what happened every event 
um, I receive multiple unsolicited offers for either a job or an interview. But most importantly, I, I was seeing my friends get jobs. Um, and it was just, they're fun to do. Uh, so virtual conferences, uh, many conferences um, haven't stopped. They've just been switching to virtual. Uh, and the reduced cost for the organizers has meant that previously expensive conferences are now free. And uh, they often have their own networking events uh, stuck in the middle of the conferences. I found conferences have been the best way to make like really quick uh, but deep connections. So I'm just going to show you the best site I know of for finding conferences here. I just have to quickly share the screen. Um, here we go. Excellent. This is called 10 times. It's like the number 10 and then times.com. And uh, you can just go by different hashtags and whatnot. Right now I have uh, Canada set here, conferences, and we have industrial engineering. So uh, it looks like there's Canadian Comtech show, um, recent advances in engineering tech, wood, uh, wood design luncheon conferences. Um, and then you can go to different, uh, different types of conferences like hashtag renewable energy um, and see what's going on. Uh, on there. Oh, there's a robotics and smart manufacturing conference going on in a couple of weeks. There's just tons of stuff going on. And so it's a great site to check out to grow your knowledge and grow your network. Let's go back to yeah, the presentation. Great. Um gonna keep going here. Uh yeah. Uh, forums are a great uh, opportunity to just get questions answered and possibly meet some new people. So some great examples are like engtips.com, like eng-tips or Reddit. There's our engineering, uh, our ask engineers, our engineering students, lots of little subreddits there. There's discords and there's many others. Um, and then volunteer opportunities. I was just chatting with uh, Beth from Engineers Nova Scotia about the, the challenges with this uh, and at the new normal, but there are still opportunities. Um, and uh, Engineers Nova Scotia Group of Young Professionals uh, is a great clearinghouse uh, of volunteer opportunities. Um, so I encourage you to uh, reach out um, to them to get connected. Uh, and there's also subcommittees at Engineers Nova Scotia, um, but also think of uh, your former professors. Um, they're still doing research at this time and it might be a good chance to um, develop, uh, like get back into the more technical side of engineering um, while also um, kind of being introduced to some interesting projects with them. Uh, there's, and in general, there's lots of engineers, engineering volunteer opportunities on the Engineers Nova Scotia website, which is engineersnovascotia.ca. I hope I'm saying it right. Um, and then mentorship. Um, Engineers Nova Scotia mentorship program is amazing. This feels like a big plug for Engineers Nova Scotia. Sorry, guys. But you can also get mentors outside of the official uh, program. Um, and uh, it's I, I have a couple mentors. Uh, and Honestly, they're great to, to learn and grow, but then also um, find out about new positions or new opportunities, um, as well as just someone to talk to about uh, amid these uh, trying times. And then finally here we have, next up, training, webinars, and courses. Woo, got too excited there. Um, so these are amazing because uh, you get to be exposed to others in the industry. Um, and uh, there, it's also a good chance to ask detailed questions uh, that you might not uh, be able to um, just like uh, day to day. Um, so what I love about asking these detailed questions in the webinar, like in the question and answer period, is that person is really passionate about that subject and it's a great way to get that ball rolling for um, maybe speaking to them afterwards and then um, maybe finding out more about their industry and organization. Another thing you can do is these webinars um, also have other people from different organizations uh, asking uh, questions and it's nice to follow up with those individuals because they're passionate about that question they ask and they likely want to talk about it more so you're able to take that um, that experience that's in that like uh, official um, uh, training or webinar uh, outside of that into other um, 
uh, like either on the phone or email or what have you. Uh, it's all about keeping the conversation going there. Um, and then there's lots of organizations that have been um, hosting great events throughout the, the new normal. Um, CANS, uh, Construction Association of Nova Scotia, is they the pre and, and post pandemic are just doing an amazing job with inclusive, fun events. IEEE uh, is one of the biggest organizations, uh, like nonprofit in the world. Um, it might be uh, electrical engineering is in the name, but it's for all engineers. Um, same with Canadian Society for Civil Engineers. Uh, we're, I'm part of that organization. We're, we're much smaller than IEEE, but we or IEEE, but we're doing um, just great webinars as well. I like Canadian Green Building Council because um, they have been, uh, when I go to their events, I'm exposed to people who aren't just engineers and I learn more about the general industry, uh, which grows my knowledge. And of course, Engineers Nova Scotia. And yeah, if there's any um, uh, organizations that have been uh, having, I guess, events um, amid the new normal, throw them down in the chat because this is a great chance to just share that with other people here. Um, so yeah, um, if you want to check out engineersnovascotia.ca slash events, um, that's where you'll see a lot of uh, a lot of great uh, webinars and conferences uh, for Nova Scotians. Um, so more a bit more on networking. Um, sometimes it's tough to cold call, uh, like I understand. Um, but uh, there's a great program in Halifax called the Halifax Partnership, the Connector Program. And what these, uh, this program will do once you register, um, and it's, sorry, for new graduates um, or uh, people in Halifax um, uh, trying to uh, ju just find a position, um, it's, uh, yeah, they'll set you up with a connector and then you have a coffee chat with them, like either likely <laughs> digitally. And then at the end of the chat, they'll set you up with three new connections and then you keep growing your network like that. And I, I've spoken with some people who were able to get positions that way. Um, and it's just a great way also to learn more about the industry here in Nova Scotia. So LinkedIn deep dive. First, if you don't have it, get it. Um, and if you do have it, uh, step one is to get a LinkedIn hero. Um, mine is Benjamin Corkum. Um, he's another young grad, so I'm gonna show uh, his profile and why I like it so much. So I just like it because it's like, uh, it's inclusive and very professional. Um, like the photos here are, are both something that we all could create uh, with ourselves uh, with like um, just a nice backdrop and nice clothes and uh, uh, and like a cell phone, uh, a cell phone. So it's not something we have to like uh, spend a lot of money on there. And I really like how he lays out uh, both his experiences um, and how he ties um, his experience pre-engineering, uh, I think he was a lifeguard, yeah, um, and uh, worked at the Axe Lounge um, at, to his engineering experience, and he does that in his About section, and I like how he lays it out with these bullet points um, for each of the, what he was doing with each of these, uh, these positions. Amazing what he does with the education, um, like it's one thing to say like, oh, you spent four years at a university, but likely we all um, might have done something else. Like we all had some sort of GPA. We all uh, hopefully were able to get some sort of bursary or scholarship, maybe not, but we would have been hopefully part of a club or um, maybe did some volunteer work or uh, really like lots of perhaps research. There's lots of things we may or may not have done uh, during this uh, this time, um, and um, yeah, and then skills endorsements are great, and specific courses you can add in. Basically, every once in a while, I'll go to Ben's uh, profile and then uh, decide on something to add to mine. Um, and yeah, I'll just go back to this presentation. Um, so another big thing is generating content. Uh, so uh, that might be tough. It's it, like, like why do some people um, have like millions of followers and whatnot? But like, it's kind of simple um, to break it down for the engineering perspective. So um, 
Sam Cain um, was uh, someone I went to engineering uh, school with. He's a great guy. And um, the second year um, design class, there was a robot competition. Everyone did the robot competition, but the only person I saw posting about it on LinkedIn was Sam. And he made it an inclusive way. He would post like uh, what he he did, but also ask for uh, critiques or comments from the greater LinkedIn community. And what this did, it, it got people like um, and like currently practicing engineers to interact with him and chat about uh, about his design and give him advice. So it's all about like celebrating the day to day. Another thing I like seeing is not just when someone posts like, "Oh, I did this course on LinkedIn." or like I got my uh, X um, diploma. It's more like, this is what I did. This might be how I did it um, and why I did it. Or uh, does anyone have advice on how to apply this? And more like just creating a conversation in that greater LinkedIn world. Um, and also be active. It's great to just scroll it like once a day. Um, I often see jobs uh, that aren't advertised anywhere else uh, except uh, with uh, on LinkedIn or a conference or networking opportunity or even volunteer opportunities. And of course, free training. And it's great to plant ideas with LinkedIn. This is the one place where you can get um, <laughs> managers and HR professionals to look at your por uh, your profile outside of their work time. Like I, you can't just kind of mail them a resume and get them to their home because that would be really odd. But you can click on their profile and then you will show that you looked at it and then they'll look at your profile and spend time basically reviewing your uh, resume on their own time. It's like a, it's a, a interesting little uh, psychological trick there. Um, go in here and yeah. Um, oh, and I saw Catherine, you asked a question. We'll, uh, Matt, sorry. Yeah. Oh, right. Matt, sorry to interrupt you. Um, you're in presenter view right now. I just wanted to make you aware of that. Oh, that's good to know. If you're able to. <laughs> that's funny. I'll just switch that up. Uh, share my screen. Okay, how's this? Is that. Um, is that not presenter mode? I assume it isn't. Uh, regular mode now. Okay. You're good. And um, yeah, um, actually, I will address that question um, about uh, for those who feel uncomfortable or unnatural to connect virtually with the uh, with others. Um, that that is a tough one, um, but it's. Um, there's more, I guess, two ways to think about it. One way, um, it's not, no one is born comfortable with that. It's something that um, over time it gets easier and easier. And that uh, brings us to our next slide, where to find positions. Um, and one of the big one is cold calling. Um, so. An often cited statistic is that 70 to 80 percent of all jobs are unadvertised. So, for every 20 jobs you see, there's like there's so many more just like hidden in that job market. Um, and it's a, a good way to uh, kind of to kind of get that ball rolling, like anything in life, um, like engineering school, for example, like first year, I was very uncomfortable with calculus, but by third year uh, and fourth year, it was just like a casual thing. I'm like, oh, I guess I'm integrating, uh, to find a solution here. Um, uh, and I, I didn't feel that way. So it's like, you might have, uh, yeah, you might literally like have like uh, chills calling that first person, but after you do it again and again, it becomes uh, human human nature. Um, and really a good thing to do is turning the job interview on its head. Um, so instead of kind of going through the the job application, which which is great, you should still do those like submitting your resume and whatnot. It's good to find out where exactly you want to work 
and find people who work there, um, like uh, like managers or recruiters, and then um, ask for an informational interview. Um, so you can just chat with them. And even if you don't land a job out of it, you get to learn more about that organization and you generate a connection because likely you're going to get a position and we have a small community of engineers here. So likely you're gonna end up working with them in the future. And um, that might even turn into a position later on, or at least a, a better connection when uh, the firm you're working for works with them. Um, and I don't know if you've noticed this, but um, I've been I've been seeking more human contact I and mean, the new normal. And I've been noticing I've been phoning friends rather than texting. And uh, even colleagues, like I'll end up on the phone with them a little bit longer um because i find everyone really just wants to share a smile or just make a new friend at this trying time and then about just bring it back to job postings um uh, so you can find ones on like websites like career beacon and monster um but uh if you want to maximize your time i like using uh, meta job search engines so they scrape the internet and take all the job or job opportunities from thousands of websites and then just put them on there. So examples are Indeed, Simply Hired, CareerJet, or LinkedIn Jobs. Um, and then, okay, uh, but one of the things is it's hard to be like, okay, I want to work in X field, but where do I find that information? So I like the the SENS. Actually, I'll just I'll just tell you about it. Um, the SENS membership directory. Um, and if you just Google this, um, uh, it will pop up. It's a PDF and um, it just has um, all of the, all of, and sorry, Sense is the Consulting Engineers of Nova Scotia. It just has the directory of all the consent consulting engineer firms within each um, set type of, of discipline and then each sub-discipline within, within the major ones. It's, uh, it's a really useful document to use to learn about the industry as a whole. Um, so uh, number three, let's go into government. And government's a bit unique. Um, so there's specific sites to find the jobs. You can't go on to um, uh, Indeed or Career Beacon and what have you. Um, we'll, we'll show you those in a minute. Um, and cold calling also does work in the government. And I'll show you how to find the, uh, the, the directories for um, the three levels of government. Um, but most importantly, it's a prescriptive process. This is a this is a very important point here. So applying to government jobs, especially federal, it's honestly it's its own art form. And it for me, it would take the whole length of this presentation to break down how a successful application or what it looks like. Um, feel free to ask some questions at the Q and A portion at the end. But the major tips I can give are. Um, follow the directions to the application to a T uh, and be incredibly descriptive in your application. Um, even if it's saying like uh, like 3,000 word limit, go up to that 3,000 word limit, especially for the federal jobs, uh, and use the STAR method of response. Um, and then, uh, so that's a situation, task, action, result, I believe. And then hit the, yeah. Um, yeah, required word limit and talk to this set of values. This last one is very important. Values or administrative priorities of whatever government uh, branch you're applying for. So you can find those on the, the main website. Like uh, if it's HRM, it would be our competency dictionary. If it's like DFO, it's the values and admin priorities. And like each kind of branch has their own. So um, you, you can find that information on the uh, yeah their website. Um, and if you have more information on this, you can always reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, just be sure to like give an intro when you do. Um, so what are the three levels of government? We have municipal, um, we have provincial, and we have the federal. And these are the three job sites um, linked here. So uh, I just list HRM as a uh, municipality as an example, because there's many in Nova Scotia. So um, if you want to work for the municipal government, think about where you want to work. Maybe uh, it's uh, in Cape Breton, you want to work for the Sydney municipality um, or, or some of the other ones, the, or Kings County. Um, just think about where first. Um, same with provincial and federal. Um, and you should really sign up for the 
the uh, email lists on these websites because they're constantly um, like sending out uh, new jobs. Amid the whole pandemic, I've been seeing engineering jobs pop up bi-weekly um, in Nova Scotia. Um, and um, But when you do sign up, ensure that you um, don't limit to like engineer in quotes. Uh, make sure you just get all jobs and if something sounds even remotely engineering, um, uh, check it out because sometimes things pop up like officer and you click on it and then you're like, this is an engineering role. It requires an engineering degree, but it's just the titles are, are different than what we think. Um, same with technologists. Often they'll hire engineers or inspector or engineering assistant um, or I, I've even seen forensic investigator and it would be civil engineering that they require. Um, and also don't be um, too worried about the discipline you have. Um, I often see like an industrial or mining engineer doing uh, civil engineering work uh, and vice versa, especially with project management in government. Um, okay, government cold calling. So do the fair and transparent hiring process. Leveraging your network is a bit more challenging with the government, but nevertheless, if you're passionate about working for any level of government, meeting those uh, within will allow you to get under advertised job opportunities. Um, and uh, so let's go with the federal first and I'll, I'll show you how to look that up. So um, you go to GEDS online, just like Google G E D S. And, uh, go here. So uh, yeah, you guys can see my screen. Um, so this is Geds, and um, if you know who you want, you can just search their name here. And uh, if you don't, but want to check out who are all the engineers in the department, um, like let's a big one that hires is uh, Public Services and Procurement Canada. This is a bit um, uh, cumbersome, but um, click through. So we know, like if you want to work in Nova Scotia, probably Atlantic region, um, and then like, okay, what would be um, engineering? So could be portfolio management, but I think for these guys, it's real property and professional and technical services. So click, then project management right here. Darn, yeah, excellent. So here are the phone numbers for all the project managers. So it looks like these, there's some, like some 902 numbers, but also some uh, New Brunswick numbers. So you can just call them up, ask them about their job, what it's like working in the, uh, for a PSBC. Uh, there's, there's nothing stopping you from cold calling these people. Um, and then same with geomatics, same with other other branches. So um, you can just kind of poke around uh, in GEDS. There's uh, there's lots of different sections in there. Um, and the same thing works. Oh, I'll go back to that um, that same window. The same thing works for uh, the provincial government. So go here, jobs at the provincial government. So you can do it by name, but um, uh, you can also do it by title. So here I like to do engineer, and then I see, okay, where do all the engineers work in uh, Nova Scotia government? And it looks like they all work for transportation information, uh, infrastructure renewal. So then from there you can go um, pop that in and then do manager. Here we go. So I went by department and typed in manager, and then I see all the managers in transportation, infrastructure renewal, and their phone number. Um, so you can kind of just start um, calling one in a, a branch that you might be interested in. So this is civil focused right now, but there's um, uh, there's the same with uh, environment, which would be more environmental. There's energy and mines, which they take um, like it's a very diverse uh, diverse one as well. So um, and the same with the federal, uh, like I was talking about, I just went to project management with PSPC, but there's many federal departments uh, that hire engineers like DFO, like d, &D. Um, yeah, let's go back to that presentation. And yeah, I'm, I'm really going through this fast. So yeah, if there's any questions about this that pop up, feel free to bring it up in the Q&A section. So, 
with municipalities due to their small size, it's a bit more challenging. Um, so you have to do a bit more digging. Um, so what I like to do is I like to, um, I guess, uh, either call up 311, if you're, whatever community you're in, 311 will link you to the municipal um, uh, call center. And uh, then you can ask them about, uh, you can just kind of talk your way into getting some connection or contact info. You can also go on LinkedIn and search by uh, where the, um, where the, where they work at, or sorry, where their employer is. And then you can also search by engineer. So you can search by engineer and like Cape Breton municipality and, and, uh, and kind of search from there. And then another special program with the federal uh, government is inventories for professionals, new graduates, and students. Uh, you should check out that website there. Um, and this is really good because um, it kind of enables you to skip the, the main jobs.gc.ca um, job applications and get hired more easily. Uh, and they're, they're changing year to year. And it might be very broad. It might seem like, oh, this, this doesn't feel like an engineering application, but they still will pull engineers from this like very broad style of, uh, of recruitment pool. Okay. So now we're getting in the shorter section. So university still has amazing resources that you can use. Um, I really encourage you to interact with your professors, um, especially ones you liked. <laughs> uh, a lot of them still want to connect um, and they, they really enjoy paying it forward. Uh, they might not be able to hire you directly, but they often are able to push you in a, a good direction uh, as they're connected to the industry. Um, and they also have uh, funding or un, uh, for paid or unpaid research. So there's some opportunities there to do something um, in the midst of uh, transitioning to a new position. And career centers. So career centers are like unbelievably amazing. Um, they provide so many resources that go way beyond resume building. Um, and many of them help uh, like really any aspect of career building and have been giving amazing workshops throughout the pandemic. Um, so a clearinghouse here is um, this Nova Scotia uh, employment uh, job seekers section. So they have the job work centers, uh, which are all throughout the city. And these have been doing online skills trainings and workshops daily uh, for the past few months. Um, and they like go into like topics where I'll talk about for one slide, but they'll do it for a week. It's amazing. Um, job creation partnerships provide businesses with uh, money to, uh, to hire uh, new grads. Um, and knowing about these allows you to go to some of those informational interviews we talked about earlier, where you do some cold calling and actually say like, uh, when someone is mentioning like, oh, we'd love to hire you, but we don't have funding, then you can bring up, oh, do you know about the job creation partnership? This is how much of uh, um, my wage would be subsidized by the government. Um, and a lot of businesses don't know about this. It's also self-employment grants um, and business skills development. Um, there's money to retool. Uh, that's in the skills development and self-employment section. And um, the STAR program is another source of funding to hire folks. And then ISANS is all of these um, uh, all of these resources, but it's focused towards uh, uh, really tailored towards immigrants. So um, really, I find it's a bit overwhelming to go onto this website just because there's so much info. So what I recommend is just choose one of these resources and then get as much as you might need from it, then move on to the other one um, rather than kind of like yeah getting overwhelmed. So lateral movement, um, maybe change of pace might be okay. Um, engineering ex education and work experience uh, has an unbelievable amount of transferable skills that are highly valued everywhere in the workforce. So um, maybe if you um, just can't find your dream position now, you might want to go into that uh, that business that's your dream company and then do a lateral move from whatever position you get in at towards an engineering position um this uh often happens in the government especially the federal government um so don't feel yeah don't feel bad about doing that um it's 
Uh, it's re- honestly the easiest way to network is when you're working at a place. Okay. Um, keep moving along here. And honestly, grad school might be an option. Uh, this is a challenging time. Um, but uh, engineering grad school is amazing because you're paid during it. Um, a lot of other programs don't have that um, uh, that amazing aspect to them. Uh, and they're also tied to the industry. Um, but then also there's um, uh, deciding on how that might affect you later. So if um, financial considerations are really important, you might want to check the Engineering Nova Scotia Employee Survey. And it actually shows um, the average uh, salary of people with different types uh, of grad degrees. Um, the Employee Survey is just a great uh, document in general to, to go for or go through, and it's amazing. Engineers Nova Scotia offers that to us for free. <laughs> I love this little guy. He kind of looks like Dewey from Malcolm in the Middle, but this is a great time to harness entrepreneurship uh, uh, energy. Many successful Nova Scotia entrepreneurs actually started due to previous Black Swan events like uh, the 08, 09 crisis. Uh, I actually met a few of them. And what was amazing is because they started then, they created businesses that were recession proof. So during uh, the pandemic, they had no trouble um, and we're just going along business as usual. Uh, so, but all this being said, I don't recommend doing it alone. Um, these are some great organizations uh, that you can reach out to. Seed um, has uh, training and funding to cover a living wage while you're developing a business, which is, it's amazing. Uh, Nova Scotia government, of course, um, we talked about some of the resources earlier. There's so much funding there. There's local competitions like AquaHack, uh, Spark Zone, even Atlantic Lottery. Uh, those are fun, like uh, just to do um, because we have this great engineering toolkit, and that's what they're looking for in those. And um, there's also pitch competitions, which is a great way to uh, develop your uh, just speaking ability. Volta puts these on a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, and if I, you think I've missed anything here, feel free to throw them down. There's, I'm always learning about new um, entrepreneurship resources. So this is one of the last slides here. So I've thrown a lot, a lot of information, so it would be really good to kind of make a, a plan. So Christy Bonner um, is um, like a LinkedIn famous individual and has a, a really great plan um, here. And it's just simple. It's like, um, but just setting up a day, like, um, she just has like the wake up, get breakfast, but then having that designated workspace, setting aside time for resume and LinkedIn, then setting aside for some LinkedIn activity time, hour break, and then job search time, uh, and then skills improvement time, then like some self-care time, um, and then interview prep time. Cause like, uh, working on that interview, those interview skills, um, is really, imp uh, important being able to quickly, uh, show that you can display your transferable skills is really important. Um, I might not have the same as Christie's, but it's good for whatever you do to just uh, write down that plan and then at the end of the day, see if you went uh, with that plan and then kind of rinse, repeat the next day and iterate where you need to. I'll just back in the presentation. Okay. And just maintain crit and keep searching. Um, uh, really, um, just, yeah, if you could name one thing you might do in the chat uh, that would facilitate finding your dream job. Um, I guess I'll start. Uh, to be honest, I would go to the SENS directory and find uh, an organization that would be in my field, uh, that's dream field, and then cold call some of those companies and just, or actually sort of before I cold call, I check out their websites, just to see what they do, just to learn about them. Um, but yeah, this is a great time just to invest in yourself. Uh, and that takes courage and resolve. So stay motivated, check those job boards, sign up for those email notifications and set daily and weekly goals, make it part of your routine. And it takes commitment and grit to be an engineer, like channel that. Okay, um, yeah, let's go. Uh, do some questions. Thank you so much, everyone, for, for listening to me. It was my passion. Um, okay, see some cues here. 
Okay, I'm gonna go with uh, uh, Prashant's question. How will you grow uh, your network if you are a person of color and our government proudly talks about systemic racism? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, our, our, often we have um, in our governments talking about how to mitigate uh, systemic racism. Um, it's something that um, often uh, individuals um, don't don't see, um, and uh, there's a lot of specific uh, training and hiring practices um, for leaders in government uh, to ensure that um, our public servants uh, show uh, and uh, consist of. Um, uh, like the diverse uh, Canadian population uh, uh, that is that is seen. Um, so often you'll see a lot of uh, government jobs um, uh, have uh, have hiring practices targeted towards um, uh, specific minority groups. Um, so uh, they'll ask for self identification, and if you feel comfortable. Um, uh, with that, I, I encourage you to to self identify um, uh, because yeah. Uh, next question: How you grow your network? Oh, sorry, same question. Um, I've got some thank yous here. Uh, thank you, guys. Can you share this presentation with us through emails in order for us to have access to the links? Um, that's a, a great point. So we're throwing this up on um, on YouTube, and it will be on the Engineers Nova Scotia webpage. And the uh, the presentation the PDF there will be uh, available for download. Um, great. Yeah, and if you don't have a question, you might want to throw down with uh, maybe something that's been helping you amid this time for job search, or even um, if there's any job search uh, obstacles you've had and, and might uh, want some brainstorming with that. And uh, yeah. I'm just looking at the, the thank yous coming in. Thanks, guys. It means a lot. Ooh, got a good one. Uh, do you have any tips on how to approach cold calling? Uh, I believe when doing so, uh, you don't often uh, get to the person you want to talk to, or some employees might find cold calling annoying. Yeah. Uh, uh, what I like to do is, uh, this is me. I like to just imagine the worst possible thing that can happen. Um, and then I, I kind of go back from there. And often I'm just like, okay, I'm going to call up a stranger on the phone. And I uh, like, what's the worst that can happen? They might be mad at me or they might not like me or might not have the time to talk to me. And I'm like, okay, best thing that could happen. They like, I don't know, give me a million dollars. Like, or... Like I, I just go like really to the far extremes and then I'm like, okay, what usually happens and kind of meet, meet my way back in the middle there. And, um, uh, and that kind of, uh, for me, kind of gets the jitters away because then I realize, oh, it's probably just someone who's surprised getting to talk to someone new. They might be in a good mood. They might not be in a, a good mood. I'll see what happens. Um, but, um, and then, okay, not getting the person you want to talk to, that's key. So if you just call up the business in, in general, like their, their main line, um, often um, the administrative assistants can act as a gatekeeper. And that's fair because uh, they're trying to, um, I guess, prevent um, uh, prevent uh, like individuals with their company from being inundated with calls or, or just making sure they're going to the right person. Um, as well like to try to increase efficiency so that's why i really like linkedin because you can engage with that direct person um and like by adding them to their your network but often giving a, a blurb at the start um so i i really like the networking idea where you're providing some sort of uh, uh like 
usefulness to the other person or like you're not just um like taking um so it could be usefulness as in like uh like a smile or um or or happiness or just asking them about their their career or what they're doing um more on the like uh just uh, talking side or if you are um or trying to get people together for a talk like um i'm big on that so it's more uh less just like saying hey do you have a job more like what do you do i want to know more about you a really great book on this is um uh, how to win F friends and influence people um and it's uh it's just amazing applying that to cold calls just uh makes that whole process easier sorry if i talked about that too much uh okay um we have another question here um uh, connecting and working with job junction has been amazing weekly meetings with case managers helps keeping you motivated they walk you through cold calls and even stay on background while, while you call Thank you, Fatu. That's amazing. I wish I had that. Um, so yeah, uh, check out Job Junction uh, if you want more help with cold calls. If someone would be in the background with my call and making me feel more comfortable than doing a debrief afterwards, oh, that would make it so much easier. Um, uh, Shia said, great presentation. I deleted my personal social media this year and rarely post on LinkedIn. Fair. I now often feel forgotten uh, by my dream employers. I will ent uh, entertain promoting myself on LinkedIn. Yeah, that's really great, Chia. I actually have no other social media other than LinkedIn because uh, I find all of them are just trying to take my attention and move me away from being productive. And they're not, whereas LinkedIn I found um, actually allows me to interact with my community, like my work community more. Um, and I see uh, a, a lot of value in that. Um, okay. And hey, Beth, uh, are you noticing any questions I'm missing? Oh, thanks, Matt. Uh, oh, um, actually, Beth, uh, someone mentioned, what are the obstacles when we try to get or EIT or PNG. Did you want to comment on that? Um, I would suggest reaching out to registration at uh, at Engineers Nova Scotia. They're they're the best resource to uh, address any questions around um, membership. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. If anyone has any other questions, we can go over those. If not. Um, Thank you, everyone, for, for coming. I really appreciate this.